But we start with Amanda Gear, associate producer for The Signal. So, Amanda, yourself and John Pike, you went up today to, and we've been talking about this a fair bit in the news, right? The tents outside the Confederation building. Uh, folks are there. They're protesting. Uh, what was it like earlier this morning? Well, spirits seemed high, considering the situation that they're in. Uh, there's a lot of tents there. There seems to be more going up every day. Um, in my eyesight, there was about 15 people gathered around the fire and chatting and getting snacks together and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they've got that fire in front of that statue of the, yeah. the, the Portuguese fellow. And uh, so right. they've got the fire there. The tents are to the side of it. They're yeah. all chatting. And then what were they saying? Well, they're getting worried about winter coming. The weather so far has been great, um, according to most of them. Uh, but the winter is fast approaching, and it's becoming worrisome for most of them. Uh, I spoke to a couple of people that are, have been staying there for quite a while. Both of them actually have been there since the encampment uh, became a thing. Um, the first guy I spoke to was Brandon. Uh, he is living there with his wife, and they have had some struggles. And here's a bit of that conversation. I have been on the island since August the 3rd. I have spent 58 days outside, considered a traveler. My wife has been sexually assaulted. I have been physically assaulted by staff, and I have also been racially slurred by staff. What do you feel are some solutions that can be put in place so that this doesn't happen anymore to get you guys in a safe place before winter comes? Different legislation, make it easier. Have man uh, go with what New Brunswick's doing. Have mandatory rehab for those with severe addiction. So you're not taking up police presence for, you know, causing, you know, moral decay and societal collapse because people are scared to go shopping because of a certain individual is bumming for change for their fix. All right, so that, you were talking to Brandon there. Uh, he you know, mm -hmm. talked to you about the, the ordeal that they've been going through for, for him and his wife. The suggestion he mentioned, by the way, uh, there's a CBC story up online. Uh, the, the lead for the story says, the New Brunswick government is pursuing a controversial approach to addressing drug addiction that could result in people being forced into treatment against their will. Uh, the headline on that story is, uh, New Brunswick pursuing legislation that could see uh, drug users subject to involuntary treatment. So if you Google that, you can find that story if you want to find out more. So that was your conversation with Brandon. Who else did you talk to? I also spoke to um, a 43-year-old mother named Karen, and she wanted to mention that not everybody is there for the same reasons. There's a multitude of reasons that people are in this situation, uh, and this is what she's had, she had to say about solutions to this problem. Build new units for housing and other um, places where you apply for housing, like St. John's Housing, Co-op Housing, and other places, and, like, uh, North U and all in is like make, make it a little bit more affordable for us. We need our homes if instead of just keeping us out here and homeless and you know representing for a lot of other homeless people, build us homes and in the homes like certain services for each need, right from medical wise, wellness wise, and you know because there's different needs for everybody in homelessness, right for like you know for addictions and for your psyche <laughs> because I mean like you lose a lot in the shelter shift, right, and being homeless. It's, it's a lot to lose, and it's hard on the head, and people fall. So what was this, uh, this was this morning you were there? What time was that, around like 10, 11 o'clock? Around 11 o'clock I was yeah. there with them, <clears throat> and they were just preparing their, uh, getting ready for lunch, having some coffee. Um, but the vibe down there is uh, is is overwhelming. It's overwhelming to be around folks who are in such a precarious situation with their living.